Hi everybody, I'm Tim from TroutandFeather.com and in this fly tying video we're going to focus not so much on my coffee mug but on a coffee bean grinder and how you can use this to improve your fly tying dubbing. Stay tuned. I think it's safe to say that fly tires love their gadgets. If you look at the majority of fly tying benches out there, you will see an accumulation of gadgets all over the place. Now in my mind, there are really two categories. We have category one, those gadgets that are marketed specifically for fly tying, and category two, those that aren't. Basically those in this latter category are those that you're walking around and you see something and you say, that belongs on my bench because it's going to make my fly tying more efficient. It's going to make it faster. Or in the case of the coffee bean grinder, it's going to make my fly tying different from others out there. Now I'll tell you about my experience, but I need to preface this discussion by saying that I am by no means an expert on dubbing and, and creating my own blends. I've only been doing that for about 10 years and I only really use it whenever I'm talking about dubbing for trout flies. So we're talking really finer materials. Now for those of you out there that create your own dubbings for larger patterns or even saltwater flies, I would love to hear from you down below in the comments section to really add to the discussion. But to tell you about my own experience, I've been using this Delaware River Club dubbing for years. I love their colors. You've probably seen it featured in a lot of my videos. And what I love about it, really two things. Number one, it's very easy to dub. And number two, it's got this entire spectrum of colors within it. You can read about that spectrum online. But years ago, I was looking at their dubbing and I thought to myself, why can't I do that myself? Why can't I make my own? Now, I wasn't trying to compete with the, the DRC. I am by no means selling dubbing, but I wanted to really refine my dubbing to match those natural insects on the waterways that I fish. Now, I love to fish in central Pennsylvania. I also love to fish the Delaware River. And trust me whenever I say that the blueing olives will say in the, the done stage, the colors of their bodies are drastically different in those two watersheds. But if you go to fly shops, they all tend to carry the same two or three blueing olive body colors. So whenever I think about my own, we'll say diving into this world of dubbing, I did it for two reasons. Number one, it was to refine the existing colors that I have. And number two, it was to add flash to my dubbing. So I'll tell you about my process, then I'll also talk about some other methods that are out there. Well, for starters, I had to start with a coffee bean grinder. There are other techniques, there are other little gadgets that you can get out there, um, and I'll, I'll list some of those later. But I started with this. Now, it wasn't this specific one. I had a really large one at the beginning. Um, you can pick these up at, at any type of a store that sells coffee bean grinders. You can go to your local thrift store. You might be able to pick them up for $5, $10. I think brand new, they, they, most of them don't cost $15. Now, the one thing that other experts will say out there uh, recommend is sometimes you may want to kind of dull the blades that are inside. I've never had a reason to because, at least for my purposes, it's worked exactly just as is. In, in the case of this one, you simply will add all of your dubbing inside of it. Make sure it's plugged in and push down this black button on the, on the top. 30 seconds later, you got your dubbing blend. Now let me talk about some of the different reasons why I like to do that. For starters, I talked about the notion of refining colors. So how I do that is really simple. I start with either an existing dubbing pack. Now it wouldn't be one of these Delaware River clubs. It may just be a random color of dubbing. We'll say like a red dubbing. Or I'll grab some type of patches. Now this is rabbit fur, so maybe I'll I have all kinds of different patches of rabbit fur. I have yellow, I have light olive, I have tan, I have white. So I'll start grabbing these different patches and I'll start mixing them together until I find that right color scheme that I'm going for. Now if I'm going for a certain color, I'm probably first going to Google online and kind of see what other colors go into that one. Or like I mentioned before, I'll start with the color that really closely matches an insect, we'll say the blueing olive body. But I'll look at it and I'll compare it to the natural insects on the waterways that I'll fish and I'll decide, do I need to make it lighter? Do I need to make it darker? Do I need to add some gray to it? Do I need to add some candy apple green to it? So I'll basically look at it and then I'll start to refine. I'll start adding stuff until I get it to about that right color mix that I'm looking for. Whenever I get it to that right mix, I immediately will stop 
I'll keep a little piece of it, I'll put it in a small little plastic bag, and I will write down the recipe because that is one of the biggest tips that I have for you. Keep really thorough and accurate records of your recipes because when you find that right dubbing blend that just looks perfect, you don't want to forget about it. And always make sure you keep just a little bit of it to the side so you have it in case you run out of your main pack. Once I pull all that stuff out uh, of here, I tend to put it immediately into some type of a Ziploc baggie and I have it until I need to create it again. I tend to make enough that will fit into about a fly tying dubbing pack maybe a little bit more and if it's a really nice color sometimes I'll share it with friends if it's a great color I probably won't tell anybody about it because I want my flies to be just a little bit different than all the other flies that fly fishermen are fishing out there now a couple other tips that I've kind of thought about over the years um, make sure you always clean out your coffee grinder each time because you don't want some of those other colors to just naturally mix you don't even know about them some coffee grinders have a little lip underneath so you want to make sure you really get that thoroughly cleaned out there and then when I really use these dubbings I don't just pull them by hand I will trim them with either a razor blade or some scissors and I tend to always add the same amount so I have kind of a pinch method that I use but there are lots of different ways that you can measure the amounts that you place into that but again make sure you keep track of your recipe now that's how I use this coffee bean grinder to refine colors. I'll run it for about 30 seconds. Once I have that nice color, I'm good. Now make sure um, if you have some type of a safety lock on yours so it doesn't run, otherwise unplug it each time because you don't want anything happening when you're reaching in there taking those dubbing colors out. Now the other thing that I mentioned that I love to use that for is to add flash to existing dubbings. Maybe I have a really nice crest bug dubbing, but I want just a little bit of an, an Antron flash in it. Now I have some choices on what I can do. I can grab some type of an ice dog, ice dub. This color happens to be peacock. Maybe I have a darker dubbing and I just want to add just a little bit of that flash in. So I'll have maybe an existing dubbing. I'll take it out of the pack and I'll place it in there, maybe half of it. And then I'll take an ice dub color that either matches it or contrasts against it. And I'll pull out what I consider to be my pinch of dubbing and I'll place it in, mix it for around 15 seconds, see what it looks like, see if I need to add more. Now be careful because it's easy to add more. It's pretty impossible to tear out because if I've already added a half of a material pack in and one pinch and I think it has too much of this, then the only way to kind of even it out is to go back to the original pack and continue adding in until it looks correct. So be careful. Whenever I, I tend to create my own dubbings, I really just go a little bit at a time. So my pinch is a much smaller pinch than I, I guess it even sounds like. Now, another way that you can easily add some type of a flash or some type of a sparkle is to get some yarn. Because this yarn almost looks like Antron. It really frizzes out really well and it comes in a lot of different colors and it's cheap. But you can't just simply cut it and throw it in there. Whenever I grab yarn, what I'll do is I'll pull out a section of yarn I'll cut it, I'll untwist it, I'll use a comb and just brush it out a little bit, and then I'll trim it into much smaller sections because I don't want that, that yarn, I don't want those sparkly pieces to be one inch long. I want them to be more like a quarter inch, so I want them really fine, so whenever they get into that dubbing, they're just creating just that little, that little glimmer that I hope the fish sees whenever that fly is coming down its way. So you can use that flash in any dubbing out there. Now, some people have mentioned that whenever they use those coffee bean grinders and certain types of flash, that it almost disintegrates them. It just chops them up into nothing. I haven't noticed that, but it could just be because of the types of materials I'm using, ice dub and these craft yarns to add the flash to my dubbing. So those are really the basic techniques out there that I've used. The main limitation that I've come across is there have been a couple flies that I just felt that I couldn't match perfectly. So then that's led me down another area, which is to start with some white rabbit and then start dyeing it. But be careful because if you think about fly tying at all, and you're probably as addicted as me, once you start going down this path, it can be even more addicting. So if you're trying to match something, you're probably going to spend a whole lot of time, probably more money than you even need to match it. Because once you start dying and then you're blending, then you know you have a lot of time mixed up into just another passion. This could be another hobby within itself. 
So um, I also wanted to mention there's other techniques out there and these techniques are not techniques that I have necessarily tried but I know if you, if you do some quick internet searches you'll see them out there. Some people will use pet brushes to mix dubbings together. I believe there's something called carding brushes, C-A-R-D-I-N-G. They use those with like wool and they brush back and forth and it does a natural blend. In fact, I want to say there's a fly tying company out there, I believe it's Hairline, that's selling an actual dubbing blending kit. It's probably not as cheap as the $15 coffee bean grinder, but it's definitely something that is more that high end that will really help to refine that dubbing process. I also know that there are um, people that use actual blenders and they'll mix water or some type of a liquid into the blender, they'll add all the different colors, they'll blend it, then you have to let that dry, kind of break it apart, so that's another method. Uh, I know some people also love to simply blend by hand. I know whenever I'm, um, we'll say, away from home and maybe um, we're away for a trip and, and we're fishing and then we notice there's a certain color of a sulfur out there and we don't have that exact color, we will start blending by hand until something looks right. It takes a little bit longer and it won't mix as evenly as the coffee bean grinder does, but it works. And then finally, there's a really cool technique out there. I haven't played around with this myself, but people basically take some type of a container and then they put the, the dubbing in the container, then they take compressed air or an air gun, cover the top, and it just mixes it by air. It looks really cool. I haven't tried it yet. If you've tried it, I'd love to hear more about it. But for now, I'm gonna stick with this coffee bean grinder. It's worked for me for about the last 10 years. I've gone through only two grinders. So you can see I, they don't really burn out on me that often. I mean, it does a really nice job with my dubbing. As I mentioned in this video, there are really just two main keys. Key number one, keep track of your recipes. And key number two, don't get too addicted with this process because it can be very addicting. As always, thank you everyone for watching this fly tying video. If you'd like to watch more like this, you can check out my YouTube channel or you can check out my website, which is troutandfeather.com. Once you get to my website, if you click on fly tying videos, there's a section that's labeled techniques, tools, and materials, and you'll see other gadget videos just like this one. If you're into the social media realm, Trout and Feather does have a Facebook and Instagram account. Under the Facebook account, I tend to post more informational articles and some pictures, whereas on my Instagram account, I tend to show more about the behind the scenes, some fish that I'm catching and some flies that I'm tying. So by all means, please check out both of those. If you have any questions or comments, you can email me at tkamisa at gmail.com. Or as I mentioned earlier in the video, I'd love to hear from you down below in the comments section. Over the last 10 years when I've been kind of creating and refining my own dubbings, I've really just narrowed my process into what you see it is today. But I guarantee there are so many of you that are much more, let's say better experts at this entire process than me. You probably have a much more elaborate process and I'd love to have you chime in on the conversation. So thank you ahead of time for any of the comments below. Once again, thank you to everybody for watching this video and I'll see all of you next time.